Hi hey everyone, so in today's video we're going to have a look at some exam content revising CAD CAM from the first year. So just a recap on what you needed to know from last year, so that's what the terms CAD and CAM stand for, how they're used in the industry, what kind of different kind of CAM machines you've got are, uh, what computational fluid dynamics is, what finite element analysis means, what rapid prototyping is, what electric point of sale is, and then what production planning and control networking is as well. So advantages and disadvantages. So advantages, first of all, is it speeds up the whole design and development process because you can edit your sketches, your designs really easily. You don't have to redraw anything. You can just open up your file and re-edit it quite simply. And then that leads into the fact that you can work with other designers from different locations. So you can share your files really easily. You don't have to post things off, wait a few days or weeks for it to get delivered. And then once you've got your CAD design, for the most part, it's pretty easy to set up with your CAM equipment. So the disadvantages are that it does have quite a high setup cost. Now obviously being in full-time education, you get the Fusion 360 software completely free. But actually, if you were to buy it in industry, it is quite an expensive piece of software. Um, the hardware as well, so buying the CAM equipment is quite expensive. But once you've got all that, getting your staff trained on it costs quite a lot as well because being a really qualified or really good user of CAD is quite difficult. If someone is, say, a CAD draftsman and they want to train someone, they can charge what they want because it's quite a lucrative or sought-after skill. So software has to be updated regularly, normally yearly, and if you have to pay for the updates, that can become quite expensive. And then what you can't do, which you sort of lose... Uh, when you go over to CAD is the ability to do quick sketches. So if you've got an idea in your head and you quickly want to jot something down, you want to explain something, you can't really do that with CAD because you've got to turn the computer on, wait for it to load, open up the software, wait for that to load. Um, so it's easier to just have paper and pencil and you can just sketch out ideas like that. Now remember what you can't do is say that CAD CAM disadvantage is that people will lose jobs. Because that's just not true. There are different types of jobs being created instead. Because CAD and CAM require highly skilled workers. So rather than being low unskilled workers being replaced on, say, an automated like production line, you're just creating a different job now that requires someone that is a CAD uh, draftsman or a, a CAM machinist, and it's just a different job with a different skill set. So the CAM processes. So laser cutting, which we're all familiar with, so essentially just works with, you've got your laser, so R1 is a CO2 laser, and what is that will shoot a laser beam into a mirror. That mirror then reflects it now, depending on the size of the laser cutter, depends on like how many mirrors you have. I think R1 has six. So what will happen is the laser beam is reflected, uh, and then it goes through the focusing lens, which makes it a lot smaller. It is then, once it's focused down, it will then cut down a very very fine line. Now the benefit being that that line is very very accurate whereas if you're cutting something out with hand tools you have to consider the fact that how thick the blade is but with your laser cutter because the line is so thin it's very easy to be accurate. Now laser cutters will cut on the X and Y axis so it will go left to right and it will go forwards and backwards so it will only cut in the 2D spaces. So then you've got CNC routing so this will work with 2D or 3D depending on what sort of router you've got. So essentially it will work the same sort of way as your laser cutter, but what it will do instead is you'll have your piece of material and what happens is once you've got your CAD drawing, you put it into the machine next to it um, and then what will happen is it will turn it into what's called G-code, so that's how it actually talks to the machine. Uh, and then the cutter, so rather than a laser, you've got the cutter bit that spins around and that will cut into what you're doing. So with laser cutter you cut things like MDF, plywood, acrylic. There are certain things you can't cut like PVC because it's got chlorine in it and makes chlorine gas. But with routing you can cut pretty much everything. Typically things like styrofoam, MDF, timbers. You can even do metals if you've got the right cutters for it as well. Um, but what it'll do is you start with a chunk of material and it'll waste, it'll remove excess material until you're left with what you want. So then milling, so works pretty similar to CNC routing, except um, 
what you'll have. So we look back at our, our router. So we said laser cutters go X and Y, so it goes left, right, forwards and backwards. Routers will go X, Y, so left, right, forwards and backwards, and Z, so up and down, as will routers. So they'll go in four, uh, two, four, six different directions. So, <coughs> excuse me, milling machines, typically used for metal work. It can do other materials as well. I mean, it's not advisable to use timbers on milling machines because then you can get dust and shavings inside some of the actual moving mechanisms and it can tend to mess up a little bit. So typically it's mainly metal work. You can get fancy, really high-end milling machines that have multiple different heads so you can have different cutters. So if you're going to do a few different cuts and then put like a little bit of detail in it, you can have bigger cutters and then little cutters and it will rotate between the two for you. Otherwise, what will happen is you do one job, have to stop it, change the cutter, set it off again, and it'll do the next job. And that's what you have to do with your CNC router. Uh, and then what you will have to do, because it's typically metal work, you have to have coolants or lubricants that are sprayed onto the work surface to stop damage happening to the cutters or the material because it gets to such a high temperature. It can end up damaging either one of them. And then you've got your CNC turning. So that is with your lathes. Typically, it will be with uh, metal uh, sensor lathes. So what you'll do is typically you'll use uh, metal bars or plastic rods. And it can do really easy things like just make a rod and make it thinner. Or you can do things like cut threads on it or bore a hole into it or do some decorative pieces. And what this does, it just removes the chance for human error. So if anyone's ever used either a wood lathe or a sensor lathe before, because you're doing it, by hand there's always a chance that there's human error involved because there's someone doing it whereas if you just program it it removes that risk of error so plotter cutter also known as a vinyl cutter also known as a sticker maker um, I imagine quite a few people have seen these before so you'll have your 2d drawing uh, again your it transfers into g-code and what you've got so if you look at the, the, the on the right it's got a little blade that goes left to right along the x-axis and then you'll have rollers that will push the material forwards and backwards until it cuts out what you want. Typically, cuts out things like vinyl stickers, uh, cards, so you can do things like nets. Um, has to be relatively thin material. You can make it do a couple of different passes and you can change how hard and the force it pushes down with. Um, quite a neat bit of kit, but typically something like packaging is what it's usually used for. So next is your virtual modeling. So this is where you can or at industry, they can test products before they actually make them. So if when they make their 3D drawing, they can test it in a virtual model to see how it will work. So that might be if you're sort of testing out uh, designs for architect architectural space, you can plan everything out, check how everything will fit. You could also, for example, um, if you're going to set, um, make a product and set up a production line, you can do a mock-up of that in virtual modeling to see how well it all flows, see if you want to change the order of anything. So it just stops you trying to do trial and error in person. You can do that virtually, so it removes the chance to waste time or money, and it's very, very quick. So next you've got finite element analysis. So this is once you've got your CAD drawing done, in loads of bits of software, there's loads of different ways of testing your product or whatever it is you've designed. So finite element analysis will let you essentially do a stress test. So really useful for things that are going on, like architectural like things like bridges, buildings, or if there's something going into an engine, like any moving parts. And what will happen is it will run it in a simulation and it will put it under the normal stresses it would normally do. And you can see where the weaknesses are. So if you look at the diag uh, the picture, you tend to get three or four different colours. So blue means there's no real stress going on there. All the way down to red is where the most stress is. And if it breaks, it will break in the virtual simulation. So you can see, okay, that's weak. That's the weakest area. How do we reinforce that? Along the same sort of lines of that, you've got computational fluid dynamics. So again, you've got your CAD uh, drawing done. And what you'll do instead is you'll put it through a simulation where you have... Uh, test aerodynamics so you have a simulation of like a wind tunnel and if we take the example of say F1 because the season just started obviously they make new parts to the cars year round to try and make their car go a tenth of a second faster so rather than make these parts 
I just put them on the car and hope for the best. They'll model the, the part and then they'll put it on a model of the car in the software and they'll test it to see if it's worth progressing, see if it will make a difference. You've also got rapid prototyping. So this is where use of 3D, print, 3D printers quite a lot is you'll model your design, you'll make a rough prototype, a rough 3D print of it so you can just get those shape, size, form, ergonomics or something and it's something you can take to a client, get them to test it, see what they think. The benefit being that you can probably got the CAD model, a couple of hours, print it out, you've got something to go and take and you can test instead of having to get, to get someone to go into a workshop with quite specialist skills, it takes quite a long time to make a model that way. So fused deposition modeling, that is the technical name for 3D printing. Now there are two different types of 3D printing. The other one is liquid 3D printing that reacts to UV light, but we're going to focus on fused deposition. This is the original type of 3D printing and the most common one. So essentially it works almost the exact opposite way as the CNC router. So the CNC router starts with a big slab of material and the cutter removes the excess material and you're left with your finished product. What the 3D printer does is you've got your filaments which are like on rolls, like just a spool of material, uh, PLA normally or ABS, and what will happen is that feeds into the, the no nozzle and it heats up and as it heats up it softens and it just starts to leave material and it builds up layer by layer. Now when it comes out it cools down and they keep layering it up more and more and more. Now it's still a relatively slow process, it still takes 3-4 hours for like a standard size print of certain things, but this is a rapidly developing area and you can now start to 3D print in metals like stainless steel and aluminium. You can start to do it in carbon fibre as well. Um, and you can also see people are starting to do 3D printing in things like concrete, so you're getting custom ones done where they're building low-cost homes in places like America. Uh, so this is a very, very quickly developing area of prototyping, and they sort of try, try to test what different materials they can do. So next is your electronic point of sale. So this is how shops manage a few different things. The main one being their stock control. So if you go to Tesco's and you go to pay and you scan, uh, the, the uh, person scans it for you, you do it in self-service, it scans the barcode, it tells you what it is and how much it is. What it's actually doing, it's reflecting the light back, so it's only really looking at the white part, reflects back at the machine and it tells you, okay, first of all, you've ordered some baked beans and they cost 70p or whatever it is. What it's also saying, if you imagine the shop's got, say, 100 baked beans and you've bought three of them, what it'll then tell the machine is, right, we've got 97 left in the shop. And once it gets down to a certain level, for example, 20, automatically it will order more. So that's why big shops will never run out of supply. The machine will also use that information and the marketing team will take that. That's why you've got things like a club card or a nectar card or wherever it is you do your shopping. That's why you're given vouchers for things that you've just bought because they've got a record of everything you've ever bought, which is very, very creepy. So with that, what we're going to have a look now is some examples of questions that we'll talk through, we we'll to pause the video and have a go at answering. Okay, so explain the benefits of CAD modeling in development of remote of a remote control. So six marks. So you've like six marks. So you need to come up with three different benefits. I can see three marks, and then explain why they are a good thing. That gets you your second thing. So six marks, so three points and three explanations. So you need to stay away from generic answers like it's faster, it's easier. Explain it in more detail. Because you're not wrong. That's not really, that's not an A-level style answer. You need to explain that in more detail. So you need to be specific about why has the design industry started using rapid prototyping more and more? Why is it becoming the normal? So can you pause the video, give yourself six minutes, use your notes, and then we'll go through the answer. Okay, so you can add any of these. So it allows modeling to test ergonomics. So you can test the shape of something, the handle of it, how it works. So for this, so we, obviously we only need three of these and then an explanation. So allows you to test ergonomics, one mark, and then you say by taking by doing a print, taking it to a client, let them feel it and see what they think. That'll get you a second mark. Uh, hollow construction possible to test fit for circuit, battery, balance in hand, 
So again, we only need uh, two points. So hollow construction will get you one mark. This will let you fit things like circuits or batteries and things in it. That gives you a second mark. Uh, model can use for ticket consumer feedback, so that links back to the testing of ergonomics. Production engineers may use model in developing tooling, so that's trying to figure out how it would actually be made properly. Finer details such as spit lines, internal screw fixings, battery compartments can be accurately modelled and tested, and you can't really do that when using Styrofoam or NDF, not easily anyway. Uh, much faster than traditional modelling in Styrofoam, so that, when I said before, don't just say it's faster, that is how you would go about saying it's faster. So you say it's much faster than traditional modelling in Styrofoam, because that's a full answer. Uh, allow the use of colour pigments in the printing, so you can get different details. So, six marks, any three of those, along with an explanation as well. So, next one, explain what is meant by the term computer numerical control, and give an application for CNC, and give one reason why it's used. So the first one is a definition and explanation needed for full two marks. And then the next one is one mark for correct application and then one mark for a reason. Four marks in total. Can you pause the video? Have a go at answering it. Okay, so CNC is the use of computers to control machines. Simply put, simply put. So, and then explanation for it. So CNC control refers to the use of computer code to control the movements of machines, tools, robots, whatever it may be. You could also mention the fact that CNC is the use of G-code, because G-code is the actual name of it, to control those machines. So give an application for CNC and give one reason why it's used. So loads that you could talk about. So names the repeatability of a process uh, accurately, so you can do lots of things accurately over time. Uh, you could have talked about CNC router, laser cutter, flame cutter, any of those. Just make sure you've got an application and then a reason that goes with it as well. Okay, so match the following CNC equipment to the application in the table below. Laser cutter, router, plotter cutter. So you can only use each other once. Pause it, have a go, and we'll go for the answer. Okay, so final lettering would be your plotter cutter. Now, you could say laser cutter, but then uh, most likely the one you would say is a plotter cutter. Uh, 3D machining or block of MDF would be your router, and cutting and engraving acrylic sheet uh, would be typically be your laser cutter or your router. Now, a couple of these can be used twice. They would be right for both, but because you can only use one, each one once, it's important you got it the right way around. So, explain in detail how 3D CAD software has been used to improve each of the following areas of product design. Concept development, communication within the design team, pre-production testing, and prototype production. So, 28 marks. So this is a big question. Give yourself 28 marks. Use your textbook. Answer it, and we'll go through. So, just to break down how 28 marks work, first of all. So... Break down the marks first of all. So there's four areas it's asked us to talk about. So there's 28 marks for four areas. So realistically, each one of those, there's seven marks within each one of those four areas. So seven marks for concept development, seven marks for communication within the design team, seven marks for pre-production testing, and seven marks for prototype production. So realistically, that's three or four points to write about with a full explanation. From each time you come up with a point, you've got to explain and give yourself evidence. Now, say three or four, call it four just to make it safe. So really, you just need four points for each one of those areas, and then an explanation that goes with it, and that'll be your 28 marks in total. So pause it, have a go, and then we'll go for the answer. Okay, so we only really need four, really. So concept development, Allows easy manipulation of central model, so you can like zoom in, you can do like deconstructed views, you can turn it all around. Uh, wireframe views, so you can look at the internal side of it. Sectional views, so you can get all the measurements on there. Uh, you can update it parametrically, which means that you can change the measurements. So you can draw it, then you can change the measurements later, and not change the whole thing automatically, easy, easily. Communication within the design team. Orthographic projection can be created rapidly. Uh, mass properties can be set, so you can test the materials out, you can test all the properties easily. 
uh, online conferencing, so you can work in different areas and send stuff wherever you are. Pre-production testing, use of finite element analysis, uh, use of virtual wind tunnels, uh, simulations of rolling road, analysis of um, flow when you're using moulds, anything like that. And then uh, prototype production, 3D printing, like fused deposition modelling can be used, uh, lets you get an idea of a model, ergonomic size and things like that, so you can take it to your client. Excuse me. So that is CAD CAM revision for second year. The first year video is also on the website as well. If you've got any questions, send me an email and I'll get back to you.